The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud, a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just because something is hidden doesn't mean it's not there. That's what Peter, James, and John needed to see on that mountain. They loved Jesus. They trusted him with their lives. He had taught them, amazed them. They left their livelihoods to follow him. But there were two things they weren't as clear about as they could be. That Jesus actually was the Son of God and that his path was about to turn into terrible, frightening places. Jesus had warned them about his coming death, and his wisdom and miracles clued them in that he was connected to God powerfully in some way. But they would not begin to understand both of these mysteries until they had seen the horror of his death and experience the joy of his resurrection life. The transfiguration encouraged and strengthened Jesus for the painful road ahead, but it was also a gift to these disciples. For a moment, their eyes were opened, and they saw the true reality of this one whom they followed. They saw the living Word of God God's uncreated light that made the universe 
in their beloved teacher. They had a vision of the truth of Christ that they could carry with them as they left. Because once they left this mountain, the other truth, the truth of the cross, was rising in front of them all. You will do well to pay attention to this, we are told, as to a lamp shining in a dark place. The disciples weren't able to understand either the cross or this heavenly light until after Easter. So Jesus told them, don't proclaim it right now. It won't make sense. But for these disciples, and I hope that they at least were able to share it with the other men and women who were following Jesus who didn't get to come up on this mountain. For these disciples, this was a gift to them to carry as they began to walk the path to the cross with Jesus. They had this holy light to hold within, to pay attention to when things kept getting worse, when Jesus was arrested, when they fled in fear, when their beloved master was hanging humiliated like a criminal on a cross. They could call to their minds and hearts this light and remember, there was something about Jesus that was deeper, that was hidden, that they had seen and experienced. And whatever was going on here, what was hidden was also true. These witnesses give us the same wisdom today in our second reading. They say, you would do well to pay attention to this light, this vision, as to a lamp shining in a dark place. Here in this place, we glimpse the same light, the same grace, not the actual transformation that they saw, but God's light shines here in our worship and draws us back again and again in our song, in our prayer, in our silence, in the word, in the taste of bread and wine, in the rich smell of the incense. The holy and triune God is revealed to us in light and in beauty. And this glimpse of beauty is a grace we've become accustomed to finding here. Here, God's hope for the world in Christ is spoken to us. Here, the living word of God comes to us. Here, the Holy Spirit of God speaks to us as to Christ on the mountain you are my beloved. Here in this place, we get a glimpse of what it is that God is doing in Christ. And we see this glimpse, this divine transfiguring light elsewhere too. We can see it in the smile of a sister or brother, or in the loving embrace when we are in pain, or in the beauty of God's creation, the triune God breaks into our everyday existence and we find hope. But those times are hard to predict and we often miss them. That's why it's so important that we pay attention to God's light that we see here and carry it with us out into the darkness like the disciples did, not only so that we can hold on to hope that God is still with us, but also because it opens our eyes to see things in a different way than we saw before. What we carry from here reveals that all the world is holy and God is hidden everywhere. We are drawn here to find the beauty partly because it helps us see God's beauty everywhere, even where we see ugliness. Seeing God's light shining in a dark place changes the dark place. We begin to see differently and expect to and look for the presence and light of God in everybody we see, in every face that is before us. We begin to see with new eyes, begin to hear with new ears, what God is doing. And 
seeing with new things, new eyes. When we take those eyes out of here and see differently, when we take our expectation of meeting God in this place out into the darkness, everything is different. Everything is an opportunity, a possibility of meeting the grace of God. Everyone is one whom we love because everyone is embedded in God's love. We see God's beauty and light everywhere with these new eyes we are given in this place. But in these dark times, remember another thing about God's light. Some weeks ago, Jesus told us that we were and are the light of the world too. And that's more than good news for others to whom we are sent. When we are sent into the world to bear God's light into the darkness, we too, yes, are sent to do that. But today, these words from Second Peter nudge us to also look inward. If you are the light of the world, like Christ, if that is the truth, then the transcendent light of God is hidden inside you as well. It's inside us. Even when our hearts go to those dark places of fear and doubt at our future and our country's future and the world's future. It's inside us, even when we struggle with our brokenness and failures. You will do well to be attentive to this light, Peter says, as a lamp shining in the darkness. Remember, remember that you are God's light too. Christ has said so. Remember that it is burning inside you even when you cannot see it. This is the gift we carry from God into the darkness. So we focus on God's light that we see here and we carry it with us. And we walk Christ's path that is before us, which as we know is filled with risk and sacrifice. It goes through many dark places. The challenges of growing into Christ that Jesus and the prophets laid out for us these past weeks at worship are huge and will be great for us. The challenges the world faces will ask much of us because we walk the path of the cross, the path where we die to all that which keeps us from becoming Christ where we offer our lives to others and for others. So in this darkness, we keep watching God's light. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in our hearts, that's what Peter says. That's the promise. That day is coming. That morning is on its way. That Christ is risen. So even physical death can't hurt us, much less anything else. That the Spirit is giving birth to life in us, even if the birth process hurts. And that we will never, ever, ever be alone on this path. Paul says in Colossians that our true life is hidden with Christ in God. But just because something is hidden doesn't mean it's not there. So we set our minds on our life that is in God and on God's light that is in us. So even in this darkness, we see, we love, we find peace, we find our life and the world's life. We would do well to be attentive to this, wouldn't we? In the name of Jesus, amen.